Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Market Structures and we're gonna do a video that's very similar to a video we've already done, okay? We're gonna do perfect competition, short run profits, long run break even, but here's the difference. We're gonna assume an increasing cost industry. So right from the beginning, what does it mean that's an increasing cost industry? It's basically pretty common sense and it's actually what should probably be the standard even though it's not when you do these types of analysis. Here's what it means, okay? That if profits are being made by firms, of course we know new suppliers are gonna enter, right? And if new suppliers enter, the supply market shifts right. What's gonna happen to the price market? It's gonna go down, right? So price market's gonna go down, so price firm, demand firm, MR, moving down. But as those suppliers enter, they're gonna put new demand or an increase in demand for the input goods to production, okay? Those inputs to production, there's gonna be more demand for them. So what's gonna to happen to the price of those inputs? They're gonna go up. And if the price of inputs goes up, We've got an increasing cost industry. And what should we do? We should shift the ATC and the MC curve upward as supply moves in. Now, just like I've already kind of mentioned, it's not the default of most professors in college, nor the AP test, okay? The default is a constant cost industry, which actually doesn't make a lot of sense. And I'm gonna to talk to why I think it is the default in a second. Let me tell you what a constant cost industry is. Constant cost industry is firms are making profit, supply, suppliers enter, so the supply market shifts right. We've got an increase in demand for the inputs to production, yet the prices of the inputs to production don't change at all. The cost remain constant, okay? Now, why do I think that that's the default? because it's simpler. That's it, guys. It's just simpler. The graph is cleaner and it's just simpler, okay? Guys, in a constant cost industry, we've got supply shifting to the right, this price firm DF MR line going down, but you don't have to shift the ATC line or the MC line, okay? And it's pretty simple to do. In an increasing cost industry, as soon as supply shifts right and that demand firm heads down, MR curve heads down, both the ATC and the MC have to go up. You're gonna to have to shift three curves at the same time. That's pretty complex and it leads to a very messy graph, which you're gonna see at the end of this video because we're gonna do it once and it's gonna be really messy, okay? So here we go. We're gonna go through this, explain it the whole way through. You're gonna completely get it and of course, we're gonna have a little bit of review, okay? So short run profits. I've already got a market. I've got a firm. I've got the market price. The market price determines the firm's price, the demand, the firm, the demand curve, the firm faces, and the MR curve. Let's put in our MC line, okay? We always want to get our MC line in there early because it is the relationship between MR and MC that determines the output level. And we absolutely want to know what the output level is. So we go down here, Q profit max, and now I'm ready to move on. Okay, I've got my output level to showing the profits. To show profits, I need the ATC curve. Why do I need the ATC curve? Because I need to be able to see total cost. I can already see total revenue. Price firm times Q, total revenue. I need to be able to see total cost. I need the ATC curve. So here I go, okay? I'm gonna have this curve downward sloping until I hit the MC. Remember, when you approach an ATC or any average curve or any marginal curve, think vertically, okay? I'm gonna extend this MC just a little bit further, okay? Right to there. So think vertically. For all of these units of output, you can see the ATC is above the MC. If the MC, MC is below ATC, it's pulling the average down. Now, I hit right there at the MC and I need ATC to go up, okay? So there's my ATC. Guys, thinking vertically, okay, that's my way of kind of trying to show you to think vertically at all these units of output. Thinking vertically, you can see the MC above the ATC is pulling the ATC up. Now, let's actually show the profits. The profits, the dot I need is this one. It's not that one that I need to show short run profits. I need that dot right there. Why do I need that dot? Because at this level of output, this vertical distance is the average total cost, okay? So I'm gonna bring this across, average total cost. And here, we can already see the distance between price firm and ATC is the average per unit profit. So if you have the average per unit profit and you multiply that times Q, you get this rectangle right there. And that would be our short run profits. Now we need to move 
to the long run break, break even point, okay? Now remember, we got an increase in cost industry, but once again, I'm gonna go ahead and think about the constant cost industry just for a second, just so we can see the difference, okay? I'm gonna grab a rule or two. So, if this was a constant cost industry, what would we do to get to the long run break even? We'd say, hey, supply is going to enter until that price firm, and really this demand firm MR line, moves all the way to minimum ATC, okay? Until we get to right there. So I would have a new supply line going right through that dot. This would draw my price firm. You see it's intersecting right there at minimum ATC to demand firm MR, okay? But that's not what's gonna happen. Why? Because this ATC line, sorry, this ATC line, this whole curve is not gonna stay there, nor is the MC line. They're both gonna go up. But let me cut to the answer that's gonna be most of the time that, that you're gonna need, okay? There's gonna be a question, and it's usually about the new price point. And here's the answer you need in relation to the price point, okay? So, Watch what I do here. I am gonna grab that minimum ATC and I'm just gonna put an arrow. I'm not gonna put price firm because the price is not gonna get that low, okay? But that is like a floor, okay? We're not gonna have the price go in between it. In fact, the new price firm is going to end up somewhere between those two. We know that for sure. Why do we know that for sure? Because we know they were making profits, suppliers are absolutely gonna enter, when suppliers enter, that price is absolutely gonna to start to drop, okay? So we know we're not gonna have a price this high, it's gonna to start to drop. And as those suppliers enter in an increasing cost industry, guess what? This ATC line and the MC line start shifting up, so we're never gonna get down here because in both an increasing cost industry and a constant cost industry, here's where we find the long run. The long run is going to be where MC equals MR equals minimum ATC, okay? It's just that the minimum ATC is going to be higher because the entire ATC curve is shifting up. So the main answer that you need to be able to provide when you're asked about increasing cost industry is where's that new price gonna be? And it's gonna be in between these two price points, okay? Now we're gonna actually do this, okay? And this is probably gonna get a little bit messy, okay? but we're gonna do the best we can on actually drawing a way that it could look. So to do this, I'm gonna get rid of a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that old ATC. It's not gonna be important for the long run. We're moving to the long run. We can see where those per unit profits were right there. So supply is gonna to shift to the right. I'm just gonna pick a distance and I'm just gonna just make sure Okay, that supply doesn't shift all the way to there because if it did, I would reach that price that I said we're not going to reach. So I'm just gonna pick kind of a middle area right here. So let's say that the supply curve, see if I can do this well, the supply curve shifts right to there. Let me put my cap on, all right? So supply market, we're gonna call that the long run and the short run. Now remember guys, this thing's gonna get messy. So this is my new price point. So this is my new price firm, we need to call it long run, short run. Let me draw a line straight across, okay? Right there. Now, important to note, I'm glad that this ended up this way. I didn't go through that old dot right there, okay? There's nothing special about that old dot. I didn't go through it, and that's actually a good thing because I don't want you to think that there's anything special about from when we go into the long run of us ending up there. Now, continue to listen closely to my words, okay? Guys, of course this is the new demand firm, this is the new MR, but why did supply shift that far right? It's because at the same time supply was shifting right, ATC was shifting up and so was MC, okay? To show you where I'm going here, I gotta shift my MC. I'm gonna shift my MC first and then I'm gonna draw the ATC. So we know MC went up some, and it doesn't matter how far you shift it up. We just know it's going up some. So there's my new MC. So we'll call that kind of short run, and that's my long run. Now what, do I, what can I do? I've got my new MC, I've got my new MR. Where do they intersect? They intersect right there, okay? That's my new MC and my new MR. And ATC shifting up. How far is ATC shifting up? It's shifting up until I get to a minimum ATC at that dot. Remember this equality, it is not changing. 
Ooh, that's so much going on here. Let me just re uh, recap a little bit here, guys. So supply shifting right, why did it only shift that far right? It only shifted that far right because I didn't have enough hands here, but what I wish I could have done is shifted the ATC and the MC up at the same time and so that it would stop right when, here we go guys, ATC hits that dot right there and then up right there, there's my new ATs, call that short run, long run, and there it is. It was shifting right until the MC and the ATC, which were going up, all intersected right there. Now that is one ugly graph, right? But take a look at this, okay? Look at that is the MR line right there. The red line is the MC. You can see the MR and the MC intersecting. This is definitely my level of output. That's my new Q profit max. And then I've got my minimum ATC of my new ATC line hitting right there. Well guys, I think you know why it's not the, that increasing cost industry is not the default of many professors or the AP. It's because the graph is just nasty. It's just very messy. Um, and you're probably not going to ever have to graph it. You're probably just going to have to ask, uh, answer questions on it. But guys at Ecom Busters, we want you to understand it fully. And hopefully you can see what just happened there. Notice that new price firm ended up in between that range. And guys, that new price firm is just the price market, which also ends up somewhere between that range because it's the price market that determines the price firm. Whew. All right. That's it, guys. That was short run profits, long run break even for an increasing cost industry, an industry for which when suppliers move in, they put increased demand for inputs to production, which raises the price of inputs to production, which of course causes both the MC and the ATC curves to shift up as those costs for every unit of output are increasing and it gets us a price firm somewhere in between this range. What was the bottom part again? That was the old minimum ATC. The new minimum ATC right there. This equality is there no matter what. Constant cost industry, increasing cost industry. If you stayed through all that video, that was awesome, guys. Hopefully that made sense to you. We'll see you in a future video. Thanks for tuning in.